Good evening and welcome to Zion. Come on, make some noise and you got to be extra loud tonight. As we're going to praise him, you know, I just want to give a shout out to every single brave, courageous, and strong soul that got out tonight to be here in person. So come on, give yourself a hand. But let's be real. I also got to give a shout out to all the wise and warm people who are back at home and are enjoying this and pressing in. Thank you for joining us at Zion Online. Of course, obviously our campuses who are not in the winter freeze. We're so glad that you were with us as well. It's awesome to be together tonight. I do want to remind you of a couple of things and I'll introduce our speaker. First off, I want to remind you if you're here and you happen to be at Hollywood Road and you want to still participate in the petition for making Amarillo a sanctuary city for the unborn, remember you have to be a citizen of Amarillo and you have to be registered to vote in the city of Amarillo. And if you want to do that, our teams are here. You can sign up on that. Also want to remind you, we've got Zion tomorrow night and then an incredible worship night on Wednesday that'll be live at every campus. It's going to be incredible, a great opportunity to just keep going with Zion and pressing in with the Lord. You know, I, I want to echo something Pastor Matt said when, when Chuck last night was talking about the winds. I, I didn't know that he meant today. I didn't know he meant the, the very next day. But Pastor Joab looked it up for us based on what Pastor Chuck said, and it's the mercy that is, got, is blowing in. So we'll just receive it. Can we just receive the mercy of God that's blowing in? We're going to receive that tonight. Well, it's great to be here. I am so excited to introduce uh, our guest this evening, Pastor Jimmy Rollins. Uh, Kim and I got to meet Pastor Jimmy and Irene, his wife, during the EXO tour when they were coming through, and they did, spent quite a bit of time with EXO, so we got to get to know them there. They become friends through that. Jimmy is an incredible, gifted, anointed speaker. He's also an author. He and Irene both. They've actually got a brand new book that's coming out this fall on marriage. You can't wait to get that. It's going to be incredible. They minister all over the country. They minister at different churches, uh, it, but he comes from West Palm, Florida, West Palm Beach, Florida. So let's give him some extra love as he comes up on this snowy night to join us. Come on up here, Pastor. So glad you're here. God bless you. How you doing? What's going on, Trinity? How y'all doing? Everybody good? Everybody feel good? Everybody warm? Come on, I'm not. I didn't bring a coat. It was rough. You know, I got ashy real fast outside. But it is so good to be in God's house, and I am pumped. No better place to be tonight uh, than God's house. Come on, how many of y'all are happy that you're here today? Amen? And uh, I am just extremely honored to be a part uh, of what God is doing uh, here at Trinity, at your church. And uh, I tuned in online yesterday and, and watched uh, the message and, and heard just all that God is doing with the, you know, changing some, some direction and, and, and heading things head on. And, and, and you know, we're going to pursue what's been pursuing us and, and moving forward. And, and I love the thought that, uh, that Pastor Jimmy talked about, about taking ground. And, and I'm going to, I just want to echo some of that in this sermon. Uh, but can we, before I start, just put our hands together and honor your amazing pastors, Pastor Jimmy and Kim, and all that God is doing in you and through you. And Irene, are so, Irene and I are so honored to call you friends. And, and y'all just good looking. I just want you, 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 you mimic me and Irene. Come on. Y'all just good looking. And, and uh, I'm excited also. I got a, a, a church planter with me, my, my friend Luke. Can y'all give it up for Luke? He's planting a church in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Let's go, Luke. And so we are excited uh, about all that God is doing, not just here locally, but also around the world. And yes, Irene and I uh, get the opportunity to serve together. Y'all pray for our marriage because we're in ministry together. Come on. It's real. It's real. I'm always right. And she's getting there. And um, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. But uh, she's actually watching right now. So she texted me, said, be careful. Be careful because you got to come back home. Amen. And uh, I'm excited tonight because I, I believe like it's a night like tonight that the trajectory of the kingdom of God can be established in a city. I'm excited about tonight because marriages have the opportunity to come back together. I'm excited tonight that wayward adult children can, can, can find the freeing power of Jesus Christ. I'm excited on a night like tonight because many of us have been in seasons where we've been between a prayer and a promise. And tonight, God can move us from just praying for something into the reality of grasping something. It's in moments like these where hope is, is, is regained. It's in moments like tonight when it's cold 
cold outside. Come on, and the national championship, come on, is on TV tonight. That somebody might not be winning in the spirit, and tonight you can find what you need to win in the spirit. I'm excited about tonight. Come on, I'm going to make y'all preach with me tonight. Amen. That God, that in a moment like this, that the presence of God can change everything about our lives in a moment like tonight. And, 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 and as I welcome those who are watching online and, and in all of our other campuses, I believe that God is not a respecter of places, that God can meet you right where you are tonight, that the power and the presence of God can make itself known in the place that you are in. And so tonight, I, I want to preach a scripture that's very dear to my heart. When I was a youth pastor, uh, this was like my first message out of this passage of scripture almost 30 years ago. And after I got done preaching, my dad, who was the senior pastor, I walked off the stage and he put his arm around me and said, son, that's the worst sermon I've ever heard. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and so tonight, I pray that I do a little bit better than I did almost 30 years Ago in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17 through 21, is an amazing passage of scripture. And there's many things that we can draw out of the life of David. But as we look at this passage of scripture, I want you to see yourself as David or Davina. Come on, somebody, if, you, if you're female. And it says this when the Philistines heard, that David had been anointed king over Israel. They mobilized their forces to capture him. But David was told by the spirit that they were coming, so he went into the stronghold. The Philistines arrived and spread out across the valley of Ephraim. So David asked of the Lord, should I go out and fight the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord replied to David, yes, go ahead. I will certainly hand them over to you. So David went to Baal-perazim and defeated the Philistines there. Then he gave God a praise. I love this. The Lord did it, David exclaimed. He burst through my enemies like a raging flood. I love that. So he named the place, Balperazim, which means the Lord who breaks through. David named the place Breakthrough. David gave it a different name after he was finished than when it was named before he got there. Trinity, tonight, I want to preach to you from the idea, it's time to call it something different. It's time to call it something different. Years ago, as we, me and Irene pastored a church, and we founded a church in Baltimore, Maryland, we, we, we had this idea, this God-given vision that we would start a track and field club to reach people that nobody was reaching. And so we started a youth track and field club, and I know what you're wondering, were you the sprint coach? No, I ate my way out of that position a long time ago. And when we started this track and field club, God put his hand on this thing. And, and as we were doing it, uh, God began to elevate it and God began to let it win. And, and I remember uh, we were training other churches on how to do this. And we ended up from Baltimore in L.A. And we were in L.A. and we partnered with the Dream Center. And we were training about 300 kids on how to run. Well, they were training on how to run. I was training them how to eat. Come on, somebody. And as we were training them, it was going so well, and, and everything that we had set out to do was happening. And, and I remember I was so purpose-filled. And at the end of the day, we, our team got together to, to debrief, and, and we started asking everyone, how, how do you think the day went? Everyone was super excited. And was, everyone was talking. My wife, her face was just a little discouraged. And so it came to her turn, and she's like, ah, guys, I, it was a great day, but there was just one kid. He wouldn't listen to a word that I was saying. And I was like, really? Show me. Come on, somebody. I'm that dad. I'll, I'll beat him. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Ain't no timeouts in my family, you know. Just. 
And so I said, shit. And he said, no, 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 no. She goes, I don't know why. I was calling him all day. And, and I said, well, what was his, his name? And, and she says, Savage Tone. Savage Tone. Somebody say Savage Tone. And I said, really? I, I didn't see a Savage Tone. And she says, it was so disrespectful that he wasn't listening to me all day. And I was like, okay. And, and I was going through, and, and all of a sudden, something occurred to me. I said to her, you mean Savage Tony? (laughs) S-A-V-A-G-E, Savage Tony? And she goes, oh my goodness. And I said, what? She goes, I was calling him the wrong thing all day. And he never responded to what I was calling him. And as I begin to think about that story, I was thinking about discouragement when it comes to our lives. And I begin to think about all of the marriages that are in disarray. And I begin to think about people who have who have been plagued with financial debt. And and you ask someone, ask them, how is it going? And they says, man, I'm just in debt. And my wife is always tripping. Come on, somebody. And my husband acting just like his daddy. Is there anybody out there tonight? Right. And, and what we do is we start calling something that God wants to do the wrong thing. And the Bible says that out of the heart, come on, somebody, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And what you say is what you get. Could it be that God wants to break through in your life? Could it be that God wants to do a miracle in your life? You've just been calling that miracle the wrong thing. I believe we have to stop telling God how big our problems are and start telling our problems how big our God is. It's time to break through. I'll be 50 years old in two weeks. I know what you're thinking, no way. Black don't crack. (laughs) My back feels it, my knees feel it. And as I was thinking about how many times Have I been addressing an injury with painkillers? I've been addressing something that's going wrong, dealing with the symptoms, but not with the main thing. And I've been addressing the right thing the wrong way. Way And I think as we pray, many of us have prayed in seasons for God. God, give us relief. God doesn't come for relief. God wants to give you resolve. Come on, somebody. God, we've been praying to God, talking about the pain. And I get it. The pain is real. And I get it hurts. But maybe we need to stop praying about the pain and start praying for God to God, for God to reveal the purpose through the pain. I came to tell you, Trinity, that God doesn't want you to get a break from it. God wants you to break through it. And I believe that as the clock hit midnight, and, and come on somebody and turn to 1201 in 2024 I am going to break the strongholds that have been over my life in 2024 come on somebody it it happened in my great granddaddy it happened in my granddaddy but guess what it happened in my daddy but tonight somebody needs to have an attitude it stops with me I'm breaking the cycle of addiction I'm breaking the cycle of insecurity I'm breaking the cycle of anxiety Call it something different. So easy to complain. So easy to have a what was me mentality. So easy to talk about our triggers and our trauma. But maybe instead of talking about our triggers and our trauma, we need to get a picture of our triumph. Maybe instead of talking about our discouragements and our disappointments, we need to start talking about our destiny in God. Maybe we need to start speaking those things that be not as if they already are. What you say is what you get. And maybe I just need to start talking about it a little differently. 
You see, as I read this passage of Scripture, we find David, King David, in a place of a new beginning. He's in a place of transition. You see, 2 Samuel starts with the death of King Saul. Chapter 2 in 2 Samuel is David's second anointing to be king over Judah. The first anointing was done in secret in Jesse's house. David is asking God, what what should he do? And, And God asked him to move to Judah first. After David's anointing as king over Israel, there was a civil war between David and the king of Judah. And in chapter 4 in 2 Samuel, two rogue soldiers kill the king of Israel. In chapter 5, all of the other tribes of Israel are coming together to anoint David as king in public. And just when all of the infighting was over, this enemy called the Philistines had raised their head once again against Israel and King David. And in 2 Samuel 5, 17, this passage of Scripture starts out very poignant. It says, when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, they mobilized all of their forces to capture him in his infancy. They mobilized all their forces to oppose him in his rookie season. They mobilized all their forces before David really knew who he was. They knew what was on him. When they heard before Twitter, when they heard before Instagram, David's anointing went viral before there was internet. Come on, somebody. And they decided maybe we should take David out before he finds out what he really is. Can I offer to you, Trinity, that tonight, that the pressure that you've been feeling is not God mad at you, but the enemy heard what God has on your life in 2024. Can I, can, can I offer to you, Trinity, that the enemy does not fight who he does not fear? Can I tell you right now that if you're experiencing high pressure, it could be because you've got a higher calling and a higher purpose. I came to tell you that opposition is not always resistance. Sometimes opposition, what you feel is God on the verge of redemption, God on the verge of restoration, and God on the verge of doing something new in your life. The enemy heard that David had been anointed. The enemy heard that David, come on somebody, was a warrior and a worshiper. The enemy heard that David had a new beginnings uh, anointing on his life. The enemy heard that your marriage is about to be in its best days ever. The enemy heard, come on, that you don't have a good resume, but you're about to get an upgrade or a promotion on your job. The enemy heard that the best days of Trinity are ahead of you and the worst days are behind you. And I love when pastor preached that this season, we're going forward towards the fight. We're not shrinking back. And it is not, somebody, somebody say, I ain't scared no more. I ain't scared no more. Guess what, guys? There are more for you than against you. And if God be for you, who can be uh, against you? The enemy heard. He heard. He heard that on a cold night you decided to get in your car and come to service anyway. Could it be that God has more in store for you, could it be, Trinity, that your best days are ahead of you and your worst days are behind you? Could it be that the enemy knows that you are the head and not the tail? Could it be that the enemy knows that no weapon that is formed against you is going to prosper? Could it be, come on, somebody, I feel, God, don't make me get a B3 organ and do a Jericho march around this round stage tonight by myself. It's crazy to me. Pastors, that sometimes... The enemy believes in our calling more than we do. But 
He heard. I got to start calling myself something different. I'm going to be honest with you. I stand here tonight with dyslexia. I stand here tonight with a learning disability. I stand here tonight and got pushed through high school because I was a troubled teen. And I used to think, man, the enemy, he's all against me, man, and God ain't for me. And why was I born this way? And why do I feel like I'm different? And maybe you're a teenager watching this and you don't feel like that God has much purpose on your life. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not here to brag on anybody but Jesus. But I can't believe that somebody who can't read barely or write barely wrote a book. I, I, I can't believe that someone who grew up with a stuttering problem and used to stutter so bad I wouldn't even talk in crowds. Isn't it funny that God would put a microphone in my hand and allow me to preach all over the world? Can I tell you, I can't tell you the day that I heard what the enemy heard. I heard that I am anointed. I heard that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I pray tonight that you start hearing the voice of God and what God has said over your life, that you have a purpose and a destiny. Come on, somebody. I believe tonight that God is waking something up in the room. Come on, somebody, that you're going to hear the voice of God. Come on, you are, you are at your computer with some bad speakers, but the Holy Spirit can speak to you and a see nothing season. I am a living, breathing, walking, talking testimony that God doesn't use us because of us, but he uses us in spite of us. Is it okay if I preach, preach a little bit? He heard. So, Pastor, I, I get it. So how do I call it something different? How do I get to the place where I can call a hard marriage breakthrough? How do I get to a place where I can call anxiety breakthrough? How do I break the cycle of saying the same thing? I'm glad you asked, number one. It's time for you to pursue what has been pursuing you. Your pastor preached, he says, we're going forward. We ain't running from the fight. We're going towards the fight. We're going to take ground. Instead of, come on, I, like I would say in my church back in the day, I ain't no punk. God's with me. If God be for me, who can be against me? I, we got to pursue what has been pursuing us. It says in 2 Samuel 5, 17, when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king, I can't see anymore, y'all. Over Israel, they mobilized all their forces to capture him. Watch this now. But David was told that they were coming. So he went into the stronghold. Ooh. I'm talking about old school Ron Cannoli. <laughs> I'm going up to the high places. I'm going up to the high places. The young people are like, what? That's not Maverick City. There's these other things called hymns. <laughs> I'm going up to the high places to tear the devil's kingdom down. Come on. If you don't know that one. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what it stole from me. Took back what it stole from me. Took back what it stole from me. I went to the enemy's camp and I Took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Y'all remember that? He's under my feet. He's under Satan. Uh, I'm being, Pastor, you're being too Pentecostal. <laughs> Satan is under my feet. It says that David was told that they were coming. So this time, he goes towards the fight and not away from the fight. But if you read in 1 Samuel, you will see that when King Saul was after David, David ran from Saul to the cave of Adullam. And I did a little bit of study in, hey Siri, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> the cave of Adullam is located in the same place where the Philistines mobilized their forces against David. 
In other words, this time, David ain't running from his enemy. He's running towards his enemy. This time, David is pursuing what is pursuing him. So he went into the stronghold. Stronghold. Oh, what's a stronghold? That sounds like a King James word. Where is that at? I think Ron Canoli had a good idea. Where was that? Let's see what Paul has to say about the stronghold in 2 Corinthians 10. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, and to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down every argument and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every, there it is, thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Stronghold. Where is it? It's right here. It's a way of thinking. A stronghold is a lie or accusation that the enemy plants in the minds of believers that are contrary to the word of God. Before anyone ever gets addicted to a substance, they first are addicted to a thought. I know this because my wife battled alcohol addiction. And this November, we celebrated eight years of her sobriety. Come on. But as we dug deep into what happened, we realized that she did not believe scriptures like, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. She didn't believe scriptures that no weapon that is formed against her is going to prosper. She, 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 she called it something different. She called it that God forgot about her. She called it that she had just been, a, been born into a family of abuse. And that followed her. And so before she was ever addicted to a substance, she was first addicted by a stronghold that she believed that was contrary to God's word. And that's where many of us are struggling with today. And it's not a substance that we're addicted to, it's a thought. A thought that nobody loves me. A thought that I'll never be good enough. A thought that this always happens to me. And instead of praying, we start complaining to the thought that we've been addicted to. But I came to tell you that you cannot break a stronghold with a strong effort. This time, I'm going to do a fast and, and I'm going to only eat this and well, this time, I'm going to work out, and maybe I've been overweight a long time. And that was me, because during my wife's addiction, I got addicted to food and addicted to this emotional that this is happening to me. And in 2017, I weighed 420 pounds. I know you're wondering, how did Irene even love you? Come on, somebody. I know, I know you were thinking. But I was addicted to a thought, preaching. Addicted to a negative way of thinking, anointed, traveling, addicted, that my wife will never love me the way I need to be loved. And because I was addicted to a thought, I came addicted to something other than the presence of God. Are y'all hearing me? Until I went to the high place to tear the devil's kingdom down. Paul says we have to make this thought and bring it into captivity. Come on, somebody. We, we, we have to cast down the argument that the enemy has, has caused us to believe that we'll never be good enough. And I came to tell you, you are good enough. I came to tell you, Jeremiah 29, 11, that God says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. It's time to start pursuing what has been pursuing you.
I thought like five people would clap right there. It's amazing. So when I was a troubled teen, I got in a few fights. I won. And I remember being at this basketball game and I was a teenager and we were talking trash in the wrong community. And after the game, I thought I was just going to face our 11 versus their 11 for a fight in the parking lot. Can I just be honest? It, just, just, it was me. Don't judge me. I'm, God is still working with me. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and when I came out in the parking lot, it wasn't their 11 against our 11. Their aunties, their uncles, their cousins. And we, if you don't know what this is, we were about to get jumped. Jumped is you're going to get beat up by a whole lot of people. So as I saw what was happening, I was the fattest and I was the slowest. So I ran first. Come on, somebody. And I'm running and I turn around and there's a guy chasing me. This Baltimore now with a baseball bat. Yep. I feel, that's why I love this church because security is all around. I feel so protected here. I ain't going to lie. Bring your bat. Somebody will shoot you. Come on. Like, 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 like. I saw I was in the lobby. Somebody had a gun. I'm like, what? I feel safe. I ain't felt safe around white, white people with a gun before. Come on, somebody. I'm joking. I'm joking. Just make, make, make sure some of y'all in the room, make, make sure you were here. Don't send an email. And all of a sudden, I'm running. And, and, and the dude did something crazy. He threw the bat at me. So he threw the bat and he missed. And I heard the bat hit the ground. Oh my God, there's a bat. So what did fat slow Jimmy do? I picked the bat up and I started to pursue. What was pursuing me? I dare you, Trinity Church, the enemy has thrown accusations at you. The enemy has thrown your past at you. The enemy has thrown your history at you. How about you put down shame and you pick up your story and you turn around and tell the devil, you've been trying to get me for too long. I am going to turn the tables on you and pursue what has been pursuing me. I'm going to call it something different, number two. Pursue what's been pursuing you, number two. Pray until his presence shows up. Pray until his presence shows up. It says the Philistines arrived and spread out across the valley of Ephraim. So David asked of the Lord, should I go out and fight the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? And the Lord replied to David, yes, go ahead. I will certainly hand them over to you. Another version says, so David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord responded to David. Can I tell you something, guys? In my life, I'm nothing outside of his presence. I'm, I'm not talking about a popular song. I'm talking about... I have found that in his presence, there's fullness of joy. I was wrecked and ruined for the presence of God as a young boy, watching my parents preach and have altar calls and watching people get restored and watching miracles take place. And I don't care how fancy church gets. I don't care how many hit songs are written around the world. I have learned that the presence of God is not found in the lyrics of a song. The presence of God is found in the lifestyle of his children. And I'm telling you right now, young people, if you're in this room, if you're watching online, I want you to listen to me. You will never find your confidence in the presence of the right boyfriend or the right girlfriend. It's in the presence of God. It is sitting in service. There's a young lady here. I was watching you doing worship on your knees, broken before God. And I'm telling you, it's in God's presence that I find my confidence. And I have, I have come to discover in my life that what is birthed in the spirit can only be maintained in the spirit. 
And many of us, we, 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 we come to the altars and we, and we come to church and we pray for God's presence and, and, and God shows up and, and he does miraculous things in our lives. And, and, and what happens is, is we're so, you know, uh, 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 we've been praying for God to move, but if we're honest, we have sought his hand and not his face. Because when he gives it to us, I've come to discover that we leave the sweet spot of God's presence. And what I've been praying for 2024 is, God, will you allow us to encounter your presence more? God, can we see miracles and signs and wonders in your presence? Because the people didn't wait for a worship service for you to show up, but they came, God, because they've been in the presence of the Almighty all week. God, will you reveal yourself to us again? David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord responded to David. What David had, what David knew, is he knew how to worship. He knew how to have a cadence of consecration. That's what the beginning of the year is all about, is, is about consecrating yourself for God to do something new. And what happens is when you consecrate yourself and you say, God, I'm going to be a worshiper, what you're saying, God, is I'm going to give up things I love for you because I love you even more. David inquired of the Lord and the Lord replied to David. My friend Mark Batterson says, something that I'll never forget. He says, the greatest travesty is not the prayers that go unanswered, but rather the prayers that go unasked. What have we stopped asking for because we've been in the presence of fear? We've been in the presence of discouragement. We've been in the presence of doubt. We've been in the presence of disappointment. We've been in the presence of betrayal. I'm telling you right now, I'm in a place of my life. I'm an empty nester. It's weird. My kids are gone, but they still want money. <laughs> but every morning I wake up to a woman that for eight years, every single day, has begun her day with an hour in God's presence. And she says something that is pastoring me. She says, honey, if I'm not working on my recovery, I'm working on my relapse. Every day in God's presence. Every day what God is going to say. Every day what God is going to do. And I know I'm supposed to be the spiritual head, but I think I, we got a secondary head because that woman has created an atmosphere that I love to wake up in. I'm telling you right now, I, I, I don't even know how to preach this. It, it's just, it's God's presence. It's his anointing. I'm telling you, David started out his life anointed in secret. And now he's got to figure out how to stay anointed in public. My mom and dad used to tell me this. Sometimes your anointing will take you where your character can't keep you. And all over the world, we're seeing some of the greats fall. You know why? They've left the sweet spot of God's presence. God, I, I don't want to leave your presence. I can't do this without your presence. I need your presence to show up in my marriage. I need your presence to show up in my finances. I can't pastor and parent these adult children without your presence. I gotta check this anger in your presence. And I was watching us doing worship. And I don't ever want us as the body of Christ to cheat or to treat God's presence as common. Man, when he shows up, God, I want to be in the move of your presence. Guys, I'm telling you right now, I, I could preach that point on and on and on and on and on, but the, the Lord just told me to make sure that the people understood what first took courage. Now, what first took courage to get requires consecration to keep. And that's what God wants to say to us tonight. And the last thing I want to leave with you before I go eat a steak <laughs> is pursue what's been pursuing you. Pray until his presence shows up. And number three, put a, play, uh, put a praise in place of the problem. Put a praise in place of the problem. So David went to Baal Perizim 
and he defeated the Philistines there. The Lord did it, David exclaimed. He burst through my enemies like a raging flood, so he named it Breakthrough. Irene, there's no such thing as Savage Tony. Only Savage Tony. And I have come to discover in the midst of a diagnosis in September, when I was just getting blood taken, and the nurse called me the next day and says, as you're sitting down, your PSA numbers are 8.9, and your dad had prostate cancer, and you're, you are showing traits of prostate cancer. I have been reading this passage of scripture, and you know what I did, Pastor? I said, please don't use that word to me again. She goes, what do you want me to call it? I said, call it breakthrough. I came to tell you, don't call it cancer, call it breakthrough. Don't call it anxiety, call it breakthrough. Don't call it fear, call it breakthrough. Don't call it addiction, call it breakthrough. Because what you call it, come on somebody, that's how the enemy is going to see it. I'm calling it something different, man. And Pastor, I got a call two weeks ago from the same nurse. And she says, are you sitting down? I said, I am. She goes, what you call breakthrough? This does not happen. But I retook your blood. And your PSA number went from 8.91 to 0 0.76. Because of what I called it. I triple dog dare you, Trinity, to start speaking those things that be not as if they already are. And the word that the Lord gave to me that day when she called, she said, he said, don't pray for a miracle that you can live. So I've been in a gym. I've been eating salads and green stuff and working out and sweating way too much. And now I got to buy new clothes because of what I called it. Could God have something in store for you, but you can't see it because you've been calling it the wrong thing? Start calling it breakthrough. And when you call it breakthrough, what you're doing is you're testifying. The word Testimony means God do it again. And every time you call it something other than what it is, what you're saying is, God, do it again. Just like you did in the Bible. And God, if you can part a Red Sea, then you can break through in my life. Trinity, can you stand with me? I believe it'd be a good idea that all of us in God's presence would just raise your hands. And from you are all things. And to you are all things, you deserve the glory. Can we just worship together for a little bit? Come on, come on, you're worthy. You're worthy of it all. Come on, let's worship. You're worthy of it all. Come on, come on, come on, Jesus. And from you are all things. And to you are all, you deserve the glory. Come on, the glory. Come on, let's sing your worthy of it all. Your word. Come on, come on, come on, Jesus. Your word, of it all. And from you are all things. To you. I want y'all to listen to me for a second. I want to show you what you just did. So my wife has been sick. She was supposed to be with me. And she's sick or she's lying because she just didn't want to hang with me. But I got this app on my phone. It's called Nest. And what Nest is, it's a thermostat. And Irene loves the house cold. But right now, I'm, I'm hundreds of miles away from her. But because of what I'm connected to, I can change the temperature where she is. So I just decided doing worship to turn the temperature up to 80. And what you did when you worshiped just now 
is you connected to something that you cannot see to, to change the temperature of a place that you are not at. And I want you in this moment to never forget that your worship changes the temperature of wherever. So somebody right now, we're going to sing that one more time. And I want you to think of that wayward child. I want you to think of that diagnosis. I want you to think of that, come on, somebody, that situation. I want you to think of that job you need. And I want you to worship one more time. Come on, come on, come on. Let's raise your hands. You're worthy of it all. Come on. You're worthy of it all. Come on, come on, church. I'm changing the temperature. Come on. And, and to you, Lord, you deserve the glory. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice and every person that is watching online. And I pray, God, that you stir us in 2024. God, I pray that we would pursue what has been pursuing us. Father, I pray that we would pray until your presence shows up. And Father, I pray that we would put praise in place of the problem. God, because you are worthy, I'm not calling it doubt. I'm calling it breakthrough. In Jesus' name, and everybody gave God some praise. God bless you, church. Come on, let's give God one more shout for that. That's amazing. Amen. Amen. Well, it is so great to be with you tonight. We're so excited about tomorrow night as we continue with Zion. I did want to let you know we're not going to do ministry tonight just to give everybody a chance to get home safely. And so let me just pray a blessing over you. I do want to remind you if you want to sign the petition, you can do that on the way out. Otherwise, just don't forget your kids. That's the, all, all you got to remember as you're, as you're leaving here. Father, we're so thankful for you. And God, we're thankful for this word tonight. And we want this to get down deep in our spirit. So Father, we receive it tonight. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you would be with each one of us as we go tonight. Keep us safe as we're on the roads. Keep us safe as we get home. But God, I pray that you would allow this breakthrough to move us into the new dimension that you have for each and every one of us. So Holy Spirit, increase our faith increase within each one of us as we move towards you and we pursue you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Be safe going home. God bless.